Krishna sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Radha Krishna. Now you show me your face. Yeah. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Congratulations, sir. What happened? Morning. Morning. Oh, that's <laughs> fantastic. Is... Fantastic. It was really good. And it goes to see our family. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And Pramod Mahajan, sir, you were wonderful. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very well monitored. Very well conducted. I got a lot of feedback. Shall we start now? Shall we start now? The time is up. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, a uh, very warm good evening to all the participants. Let us start with a prayer. One Participants, I invite Dr. Suresh Nair, our Sonal Director, Mumbai, and Principal of Vivek Vidyalaya to introduce the gathering. Sir, please do your welcome address. Thank you, Dr. Sheeshan. Good evening, everyone. Learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. How apt here this quote is, since we have the learned personality who is going to enlighten us on the topic. Is your school a learning institution? And it is a great honor for me to welcome our esteemed guest, Ms. Kavita Anand. Members of board of directors, zonal directors, premium members, principals, and teachers to our 61st Saturday webinar series organized by CEIR, Center for Educational Initiatives and Research Fest Global. Center for Educational Initiative and research, CEIR, as all of you are aware of, is a forum of experts and scholars who aim at nourishing the talents of educators and to raise the education sector in India to global standards. CEIR, as an efficient board of directors, zonal directors, and premium members all across India and the Middle East. Since the year 2009, CEIR has conducted 11 principles conclaves 16 interactive sessions with CBA, CBSC officials, 60 Saturday webinars, 26 handwriting made easy workshops, and seven career counseling sessions for students. We feel proud to share that CEIR was the pioneer in conducting a national level quiz on NEP 2020. With the successful conduct of NEP quiz, we have marvelously conducted NEP masterclass series and NEP pedagogy series. All CEIR activities are going to be held through CEIR Global App in future. And we request all the participants who have not yet downloaded the app to download the app for easier connectivity to the program. Through the app, you can watch all the uploaded videos of earlier sessions, download the certificates, etc. It works like any other app in which you will be getting the uploads, sorry, updates as notifica notifications. I'm very happy to inform you all that already more than 4,000 educators have downloaded the app so far. Handwriting is one of the most essential skills which affects students' self-esteem, confidence levels, and even their performances. With online classes, teachers find it difficult to take care of students' handwriting as in the normal classrooms. CEIR Veda Handwriting Lab has come up with a practical solution a well-crafted training kit with a personalized student application to help them to acquire neat and legible handwriting. Please visit vedahandwritingkit.com. We are extremely happy to announce that CEIR plans to honor 
outstanding schools with the ceir the mark of excellence awards from this year onwards there is no registration fee at any stage of the award and merit is the only criteria for the award for more information please visit ceirglobal.com and join our facebook page for the updates of all activities of ceir friends we are very fortunate to have ms kavita anand as our speaker of the day we are also privileged to have ceir board of directors other zonal directors premium members principals and teachers amongst us once again i cordially welcome all of you on behalf of ceir and now let me introduce our speaker of the day ms kavita anand ms kavita anand is the co-founder and executive director of adhyan quality education services private limited ms kavita is catalyzing a committed learning community of educators across india to transform the learning of students for more than 3 decades as an educator researcher funder school and system leader and now edupreneur she has worked towards ensuring a good school for every child ms kavita began her teaching in mumbai's elphiston college her curiosity about students motivations for their life choices became the reason for researching school based education she helped spreading the educational innovation of the aga khan education service india and then worked to expand the education portfolio of the sir ratan tata trust the experience was a launch pad for her own play school kids at play and for setting up the now renowned k10 school shishuvan in mumbai mumbai in addition she has been involved in school setup curriculum development professional development leadership and governance of schools and school network before starting adhyan as a social enterprise and network to expand exponentially on the scale of impact ms kavita co-founded the adhyan foundation in 2015 the foundation was commissioned by the delhi commission for child protection to collaborate on the creation of a school development index for 5800 delhi government and private schools the foundation is currently partnering with the goa government to design and deliver the systematic school improvement program for its 826 schools supported by the tata trust in response to covid-19 and the lockdown of schools the foundation worked closely with the department of education to enable all schools in the state to function online this required a massive online professional development program training 11000 plus teachers over a period of 4 weeks adhyan foundation is currently supporting the subject committees to create online resources on the dicha platform and developing the state's continuous learning plan through 104 school hubs over the last decade along with her husband and co-founder spoky wheeler kavita has provided support for the open universities program teacher education through school based support kavita was an integral part of the international delivery team for the school leadership development program curriculum with the national college of teaching and leadership nottingham and the national university of education planning and administration that is nupa which trained over 7000 government school leaders across five states of india a fellow of the royal society of arts uk ms kavita was a, was awarded an ashoka fellowship in 2015 for her single minded determination to improve the quality of education in india kavita serves as a member of the academic council of somaya vidya vihar which comprises 34 institutes and is on the development committee of the kabila kandwala college of education she is a member of catalyst 2030 and part of the core team setting up catalyst 2030 india kavita has presented many persons sorry many papers on adhyan's work at national and international conferences and is an and is an acknowledged public speaker you can hear it tedx talk scnc 2016 conference of budget private schools and don bosco principals conference her institution adhyan as a vision of a good school for every child and mission of helping 1 lakh school leaders transform learning and live lives of students by 2025 I once again welcome you ma'am to our 61st Saturday webinar. Before 
I hand over to hand over the platform to ma'am. I request all the participants to mute your audios and keep your videos on. Please post your questions in the chat box. Please note that e certificates will be issued only to those who attend and submit feedback of at least two sessions of this month series. The feedback form will be posted in the chat box towards the end of the session. Certificate will be issued only after finishing this month series. That is. In next uh, month, the uh, first week of June. Kavita, ma'am, I request you to take the charge of the floor. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for that uh, long introduction. I am sure everybody realizes that I have lived a very long life, which is uh, the reason for my white hair. And so I will be pardoned for anything that I do to take. Uh, uh, a time to be able to make my point, right? So I think all of you will have to have a lot of uh, sympathy for my years. I think uh, I want to just say a big thank you to Vijayam, uh, who's an old friend and has uh, been uh, instrumental in getting me into this room. And uh, Dr. Gopinath, who's been kind enough to share his platform and uh, make it possible for us to have this conversation today. I see a lot of friends as well on this uh, in the group. I think there's a uh, close to a thousand people in the room. So it's going to be a challenge because none of the programs that we've ever done are just lectures. So I do would, I, I would like this to be uh, very interactive and I am actually looking forward to, I think this is going to be a record in terms of how interactive we can make it when there are a thousand people in the room. Right? So um, I hope to see um, a lot of participation. So uh, I, I, Adhyayan has been, uh, you know, is a word that is known to everybody. I think uh, we all, because we are educators, we know that it means to study something very deeply. And uh, what happens when you study something very deeply is that you get transformed, right? So uh, the, uh, there is, um, the one thing is the knowledge within the, the text that you are reading, but then it talks to the knowledge inside the learner. And once the learner's knowledge and the knowledge of the text mix and meet and mingle, there's a transformation that happens in the learner. Right? So that's where the idea came from, that if we begin to study uh, anything uh, in front of us, and especially what is closest to us, is if we begin to study our schools, to understand what is the purpose of the school, what was it done, it was you know, created for, that's when we begin to take our knowledge and the knowledge that we have in the school, in its stakeholders, in the students, in the teachers, in the parents, and, and begin to put that all together. And that's when there's a transformation because everybody begins to listen to each other deeply, understand where each person is coming from, understand what is it that's happening in that school to make it a learning space, to make it a learning organization. And today we will do some uh, of the understanding of what is the fundamentally important thing to begin with if you want your school to become a learning organization. And if that happens, if you have been able to achieve that, then whether there is a crisis, there is no crisis, whether life goes on as normal or there is a stoppage, you are, your learning will not stop. The students' learning will not stop. And that's what a learning organization does. So let's today do a deep dive. We've got the time uh, and the platform to together in a large number, do a deep dive into what is that step and what happens there. Um, because uh, all of you are uh, probably um, on this platform, have a sense of what, what are the different kinds of things these platforms can do. We're going to start with a poll uh, and uh, I'm going to invite my director from Adhyayan uh, Neha to be able to put the poll up for everybody. And um, if you see it coming up on your screen, uh, please uh, click on the answer that you would like to give. And uh, let's get a sense from uh, the thousand people here as to how many of you know these particular. Yes, it's just the, launch, uh, the poll has been launched and uh, it's rapidly, yes, everybody's been accessing. Uh, 
right so we've got about 385 uh actually i think somebody just closed it <laughs> i oh. haven't yeah it just got closed by maybe one of the co-host um okay so i uh, yeah we've had 385 people who voted so i can just share the results of those uh, as an indication because otherwise we'll have to relaunch it yeah okay so I think uh, we look at this as a sample. So that tells us that about 67% of the people should know, probably know what the Zoom poll is about. And quite a few, about 17, 21 to 17, 20% uh, know Mentimeter, Jamboard and Padlet. So that's something that's useful for us to know as people who are hosting this, this conversation, right? And uh, so the couple of more questions that we have um neha would you be able to put the other ones as well or yes you... we'll put the mentimeter right that's what uh, yeah yeah on the mentimeter so is that started off again is it uh so i just request all the other co-hosts to uh, not uh i mean you can just leave the poll i have ended the poll so we don't need to start it again uh, i've ended the poll and yeah we the poll is over now <laughs> So I'm putting in the Mentimeter link in the chat. Uh, you just need to go to the chat. Everyone can access the chat and click on that link and it will ask you a question. And the question is about uh, how are you feeling about the situation around you? So you can uh, go there and access that. You want to put the- Yes, I, I'll share it. Uh, you want me to share the screen, right? Yeah. The... Yes. Yeah, so... I have seen Neha's name and the the Mentimeter link on the chat. Neha, you want to sort of paste the link again, perhaps? Yes, or... I have. Yes, just pasted it again. I hope all of you can access it. I've pasted the link twice again. I think there are a lot of good evening messages, so I guess it's getting uh, lost in that. Lost yeah. in that, yeah. It's lovely to see uh, when we have so many people uh, and everybody's getting on to it, the words changing rapidly. Uh, you have a chat again asking for the link. I'll so put it again, yes. Uh, so a lot of us are putting the words in the chat box as well. If you want to just access the link that I have, you will... Uh, that I have put in the Zoom chat. You will be able to access the Mentimeter. Try it out. It's a new, it's a tool if you haven't tried out, worth trying out. We see a lot of uh, words even in the chat. I just want everybody to understand what this word cloud is. So the words that get repeated become larger, right? So you have a lot of words that are uh, standalone or maybe one or two people have put them in. And then you have words that a lot of people have used, the same word, right? And you can see from a thousand people's responses that there are, there are specific words that are coming out very clearly as being the, the large, the ones that are, you know, shared by a large number of people in the room. At the moment, the word that seems to stand out and hasn't actually changed right from the very beginning is the word challenging. 
And I can see that the challenging word has come in the chat as well. And it's, it's clearly a difficult time for any educator, for any teacher. But I, I think the word challenging has a very interesting connotation and we will look at that again much more closely. The other words that are coming through are sad, it's a scary time, anxious, confused and uncertain, not good. And then there are some other really interesting words again, which are, it's good, it is positive, curious, excited, uncertain, but unpredictable, yes, again, goes into a space of fear and horrible, depressing, I think this is an absolutely beautiful way of being able to collect everybody's feelings and get a sense of largely where is everybody. So Neha is going to now uh, give the next link for changing. Uh, the yeah, it's it's going to be the same link. Okay, same link, but the next question. So what does everybody have to do? It will just change by itself? Yes. And now on the same link, uh, if you have that tab open, you will be able to uh, access another uh, question, uh, which says one word that describes your feeling towards online teaching and learning. And if you do not have that open, I'm just sharing the link again with you so that you can access it in the chat. Yes, I hope you can access that. Should we put the question up on the screen as well so that everybody can yeah. see that? The chat is also full of words, innovative, interesting. Exciting, new learning. So we have here two different kinds of situations. One challenge to us is the COVID-19 situation that we find ourselves in, which is extremely difficult. It's interesting, the same word challenging comes into both, right in the center, chosen by the maximum people. But the one that uh, is, uh, is surrounding um, the, this word, the words here surrounding this word in this, in this question about online teaching and learning are all about something that's exciting, new learning, new experience, creative, you know, enthusiastic about what's happening, amazing experience, excited. So you can see that there is, uh, you know, both are challenging, both are extraordinarily challenging, but one has associated with it a sense of what we would call the growth mindset. And the other has what is associated with it, what we would call the reaction to something that is negative, which is a stress reaction, right? And so there is a, um, 
there's an interesting thing about this word challenging that you yourself have been able to see for yourself that while it sort of centers uh, you know both of these conversations both of these questions are centered by that word there rep- the the sort of ripples around the word the way the the rest of the words come around it are very very different so what does it tell us about how we are as people and we can we are really complex human beings as as educators as people as adults as children as people who are part of education we are an extremely complicated uh, group of I mean, people all of us are with extremely complex emotions within us and yet the thing that you know determines how we respond to a challenge is what is going to form us and that fundamental thing of knowing ourselves knowing who we work with knowing what the planet is about the three levels of knowing is what actually learning really fundamentally has to be about and and that's what schools are meant to do and that's what they are meant to be created for if you look at any society in any place in the world you will find schooling is the common factor you they may not live the same way they may not have the same food they may not have the same clothes the same language but the one system that is common to everywhere is that there is a space a, a very formal space created and that seems very similar to each other anywhere across the world and that is schooling so there is an agreement that there is a sort of a, a rite of passage that children have to go through in any society to become adult to be able to take over and run the the world as we know it today and this this question for us about who am i why do i exist why does my school exist is where you begin from when you start this conversation about how to move to becoming a space of greatness a, a learning organization for the students for the teachers and the parents and of course the leaders who lead it yeah so which which is what we are going to be really doing a deep dive into any um, responses anything else that you've seen in these mentimeters and the fact that both had the word challenging centrally to the to the definition and yet the words around it had a very different feel to it right to the same word challenging anything that you would like to say here at this point please use the chat for that okay so why does adhyayan exist and that's the question i'm asking you to sort of think about for school so let's start with that in terms of us when running a school um it was um, quite clear that i could do a lot of things in the school as i could make a lot of decisions saying you know how do i want the curriculum to be what do i want the classrooms to look like what is it that the you know at the gate what should be the experience of a parent when they walk into a gate when the parent walks into the room when the child walks into the classroom what should be the experience what should it look like what should it feel like and that kind of control that i had over making those decisions made me feel that yeah okay you know this is something that i can contribute i can create it the way that i think good education really needs to be and you heard about my earlier experiences of the kind of work that i had done so i came with a a lot of new ideas saying that if there is something that can be looked afresh at how a school should be set up then let's do it that way so not getting into a fixed set of textbooks not having a fixed curriculum uh, all of those things were possible but really speaking when you when you are uh, looking at a particular space only from one um, one stakeholders eyes then it's a you know it's it's easy to to look at it and say yes i can make a decision about the uniform i can make a decision about the fees it's when you begin to look at it from everybody's eyes that's the other stakeholders when you start asking the children how do you see the school or the parents or the staff the support staff the the person at the gate the watchman that's when you begin to get multiple ways like we just got you know like a word cloud of understanding 
And it's about negotiating that. It's about beginning to start seeing that, which led us to this sense that if a school has to become a good school, everybody in that school must speak the same language. That's where it begins. If I am going to see experiential learning as important, then that's something I must understand. How does a child see experiential learning? How does a teacher see it? How does a parent see it? It's only when we all have the same understanding that we will experience this in the same way. So that's, uh, that's something that I think a lot of you would have seen if you've tried to make a decision. Uh, say, for example, when we, are, when we started working with schools, I'll give you an example of what you might have experienced. Uh, a school would, uh, would say, yes, we feel that the homework should be different for different children. And then if you ask, why wouldn't you do that? The response is because the parents would not accept it or the teachers would not accept it or the children would find that very difficult. So we start with the whole thing of, I want to change the homework because it makes sense to me that a child should do different homework because of the different place they are in. But the rest of the stakeholders will not understand it and not see it like that. So that's when, um, the question that we would ask is, how do we build this understanding of what is homework? What, what is it that we have to do uh, to get children to understand what is homework? Why do we do homework? To get parents to understand that. So this conversation that needs to happen is what uh, typically um, the response that we would get. And I can ask you, would you like to see how frequently you can have that conversation in school, what is the first uh, feeling that you would get in terms of anxiety? And um, is there somebody who would like to answer that on the chat? So if you were to say, like, if you were to have these conversations in the school, what is it that would make you anxious about that? Anybody on the chat? To recall what is taught in class, Hasina. Thank you for saying that. That is something that you have as an explanation for what is homework, right? Manjusha says not anxious, exciting. Right. But how, how would uh, it look, look when you ask that question to a child? Do you know what they, how they see homework? Has anybody asked? Yes, thank you. Padmini says time constraints. That's where you would have the problem, right? So then there would be a reaction from the teacher or there would be a time constraint. You'd say, how can we have these conversations? Where is the time to have these conversations? It is just too complicated already our syllabus and our curriculum and the exams and all the things that we have to do, it's too much, right? So what, the, what any, any aspect of a school, if you pick up and say that I need to find out how other people think about it, that's when the anxiety starts building up, right? As uh, in terms of how can we have these conversations? So if we begin, I think let's, let's start looking at one uh, particular lesson of a teacher and start unpacking that to say, how can these conversations happen during learning itself? And they become a part of the learning rather than it becoming something that is not uh, decided by children rather than something coming from somewhere ou outside externally, how do we make it part of it? So I'm bring bringing to you one example of how to look at this, these kinds of open discussions, yeah? Fantastic, I love the answers. I can see that there is a lot of thinking, but each one is saying that this is what I've thought. I'm asking you, have you asked the children or had such discussions with children? or with teachers, or with parents. Yes, so we all have our perspective on what homework is, for example, right? Hira, you have a perspective on homework. Sampada has a perspective on homework. Minakshi has. The question is, how do we have a discussion with the other stakeholders? And I'm going to be introducing to you one teacher and uh, this is a teacher from Bombay International School. We've borrowed her lesson as an example for you from one of the sessions that we've had at Adhyayan uh, because we have the community of practice of our, I, I think you heard about the fact that we are creating a, a movement of uh, people who really want to study learning together. And this is what she showed us in terms of how she does something, okay? 
So she's going to begin her lesson. I'm going to give you a quick three minute sense of how her lesson went. And then we'll unpack this lesson in terms of how does it enable Just Just think about it before we start. How does it enable a conversation, a discussion to happen in class that goes beyond just the content, okay? Which goes into the learning. So let's, let's begin with this. So as we are looking at this, um, uh, we say that the, the way in which Fiza speaks to her, her students is saying that you are historians, you are big historians, and you are these uh, amazing people who can experience what the masters have experienced when they are anthropologists, archaeologists, and geologists, okay? So here is a teacher telling her students that you all are big historians, and we're going to learn by becoming anthropologists, archaeologists, and geologists. So we go through the videos. Um, uh, this is, these are the videos that she has created. And we are going to do an exercise around it, right? OK, so are we together till now? So here is a teacher. She has introduced this lesson to her students. And she is saying that you are going to do these things. There's going to be a, a mind map, a, a, you know, group work, et cetera. We're going to do all of these things. But you are going to behave as if you are anthropologists, archaeologists, right? And of course, the children uh, would be curious, like they would say, you know, what is an anthropologist and an archaeologist and how do they think and what do they do? So here is the next slide by the teacher where she introduces a video, right? And says, what is it that after listening to the video, what do you draw as conclusions from this information this person is giving you in terms of what she does as an anthropologist, right? So here is uh, um, another person that she's introduced. And she says, here is an archaeologist. And what is it that you've learned from this archaeologist and what they do, right? So here you are looking at a teacher who is taking her children through this, right? She's kind of got them to first listen to one person, then another. And the third is the geologist. And she says, listen to this geologist, shows them a video and says, now, what do you think? they do and gives them time after every uh, thing that is uh, after every video to think about it and write it for themselves. Okay, so are we here now looking at this teacher, we are all getting a chance to look at this teacher's lesson, and how she's introducing this to the students, right. So she's given them first an introduction to these three ways of seeing something and she said this is how an archaeologist does it this is how a geologist does you know looks at the same material okay so now what happens after this she says that you have to be in a, a, a group discussion i will provide you with the groups and who the groups are the group leader's name will be highlighted so you will know who the leader is and then you are going to collaborate with each other collaborate on the exercise that is going to be provided to you. So this is her, uh, this teacher, Fiza, has told her students that this is your group. Uh, we have changed the names here so that you don't uh, have any difficulty in looking at this slide. It's, we're not giving away any information here. But we are just saying that this is how she provides the groups and says this is the conversation that you're going to have. Yeah. So, so far, uh, what she has done is given them the three people to listen to, ask them to think for themselves indep independently, then created them into groups, and then said that if you find um, fossil evidence from a new culture, then what would an anthropologist do? What does a geologist do? And what does an archaeologist do is what you have to do in the groups. You have to think, okay, of how it works. So this is um, how she's structured her lesson to get the children to think from the viewpoint of a professional, from the viewpoint of an archeologist, a geologist. So these are people that she's looking at, anthropologists. Next thing, what does she do as a session? She says, this is what the evidence is that is available. And this is where it is available. This is your resource. She provides a resource for learning. And she says, now look at this resource. So this is what you will use to be able to do the next exercise, right? So um, not only has she been giving them a, a, a sort of a way of being able to enter into uh, people's 
ways of thinking, different ways of thinking, being able to help them distinguish between the ways. But then she provides them with something which they would have got as evidence. And she says, here is something, how would you now use this? Right? If you were a geologist or an archaeologist or an anthropologist, how would you use what you see? And the task provided is you pick a role for yourself, study this evidence, and then ask the right questions. Right? So she's collecting what? She's not collecting facts. She's collecting questions. She's asking people what kinds of questions. Right? So here you have um, a way in which this, the student is going to be thinking about if I was uh, an anthropologist, what kind of questions would I ask? She's not saying, give me the answer. She's saying, what kind of questions? And then eventually here is the, the discussion then goes into, so if this is what these people were doing, if this is what they were living like, if this is what they were eating, what was a day like in their lives? Like you have a day in the life of a student in, in my school. How would it be to have a day in the life of a person who was an early human who lived in a cave, right? So you've got a, a lot of opportunity to get into the mind of uh, you know, professionals. And now you are getting an opportunity to be in the mind of a person who lived in a cave using those kinds of materials. And you have to put yourself into the shoes or the feet, because at that time, maybe there were no shoes of a person who lived in that time. So let's look at what we get from this lesson, yeah? And, and this is a, a fundamentally important question for us because when we are having discussions that are larger than just specific information being given, what kinds of things happen? What is possible is what we're going to ask you. Uh, Neha, do we have the poll for everybody in? Yes, yeah. so I'm just gonna sh stop sharing so nobody's confused. Okay, so in and this, I've, yeah, I've launched the poll, and there are two questions in the poll. Yes, wonderful, Smita. So, yeah, in this lesson, what skills will the students learn? You can pick the ones you think they will have learned and identify them. Yeah, okay, so. Everybody's got the poll on their screens. Yes, the polling has. You are able to pick more than just one. So please pick as many as you feel have happened. And then I'm going to take a big risk <laughs> and ask a few of you to say where you saw that happen. Right? Uh, Miss Rekha, uh, the poll is on your screen. There isn't a link. Uh, you'll be able to just see it on your screen. It would be lovely for everyone to try putting in their responses uh, on the poll. So we can get a collective, uh, you know, feel of what everyone is saying. Thank you for putting it in the chat too. Sure. Yes, Anuradha. So... Participation, involvement, teamwork, research work is what you've identified. Prakash has identified listening, comprehension, critical thinking. So Parveen is saying she's not able to see the poll. Philomena, you can ask your question while everybody is answering. You can unmute if, you, if it's possible. Or if it's not possible for you to unmute, you can put the question onto the chat. So we've had about uh, close to 45%. Okay, so some people being done. Have the poll, but- Yeah, and that's highly possible, uh, you know, in case you've swiped it or something, then the poll just goes away from your screen. So. Okay. So we can uh, we can actually stop the yes. phone and have a look at the responses. Uh, Philomena, are you able to hear me? Will you be able to unmute, or if you can't unmute, will you please put your question into the into the chat? 
think she may have this. It may be by mistake also, Kavita. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Sure. So, so I'm just ending the poll. We've got about 54% uh, of the right. audience that has voted and here sharing the results. All right. So uh, clearly your uh, winner here on the first one is that critical thinking is going to be uh, very high. And uh, I think it's interesting that you're saying that. Uh, for me, the second one says uh, that uh, to be able to plan this lesson, you're, you're identifying that it's gone. Collaboration. Clearly defined outcomes need to be known is what your, is, yeah, is your, yeah, sorry. Is the highest piece. Yeah. So, yes. And um, I think it's interesting again that there's critical thinking here, which has been placed right on top. Um, and empathy, which is seen as 13%. So, let's look at this word empathy and unpack that a bit. Uh, anybody willing to open the, you know, unmute and speak about it? about either where, where they see critical thinking and why empathy has got only 13%. Maybe the people who are 13% of the people who said empathy might want to say why they think empathy has come into this. Vijayam, is, is it possible for people to unmute or not really? Uh, Dr. Sreesan? Are they allowed to unmute? I think host has to host has to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, so we, 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 they can't unmute Kavita, and uh, we've started getting responses in the chat. It okay. says empathy means to feel something in some in the same shoes. Yeah. So understand uh, from this other side uh, side of other person's point of view. Right. So the point of view uh, of a person to be understood, you have to be in their shoes. That is very clear. That is what we're talking about when we say empathy. Anybody who wants to say why they felt empathy was part of this lesson? Yes, Anchal, it is to feel in the same shoes, right? So, so in this lesson, where did we see empathy getting highlighted. Right. So empathizing with the historian, with the geologist, archaeologist. Correct. Yeah, we're looking at the ability to understand, share the feelings, concerns, thinking of another person. Yeah. Exactly. They would realize how people are in those days. So stepping into the shoes of the person who lives in a cave to say, what is my day like? What would my day be like if I was living in that time? So not just as an uh, anthropologist, but even as a person living in a cave, what would my day be like? Only then they will understand the work of the professional. Only then they will understand what it might have felt like to live in a cave, not to be living in, in a home like they are right now in a building or a society. So there's a you know, um, fantastic ability like we've seen here uh, to be able to do everything that the National Education Policy 2020 says. This lesson has been able to cover it all and you've identified that it has done that. It has, it has identified everything. But yes, I think for me, what was really lovely about this lesson was that it actually identified other people's thinking, other people's feeling. How do you understand another? Right? How do you understand another in terms of a profession? How do you understand another in terms of something that you've never experienced? A child has never experienced living in a cave, but through this whole process and through understanding how uh, the, the expert would look at it, they are beginning to enter into that space where they say, hmm, if they had these kinds of tools, if they had these kinds of things, how would they have felt? What would their day have been like? What would it have been like to go and hunt for food or forage for food or pick it up? And how could they have lived? What kind of clothes? How would they have been um, able to live together? Would it be individual, small families, big families? How many people would they have to interact with? So all of this thinking that needs to happen, the empathy that gets built 
to share and visualize the feelings of others, the, the life of others. This is what you're picking up, right? And I think this, this is the, the fundamental thing that what, what we are trying to do here. Um, so Vijayam, there are many people who've picked up their hands. I mean, unless we've got a lot of people- I'm sure, uh, Dr. Sreesan, <laughs> uh, he will be able to help, I suppose. Yeah. Sreesan, are you there? Oh, what is happening? No, that's fine. So, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. They can, they can unmute. They can. I'm sorry, sorry. They can unmute and to speak. Okay, Poonam and uh, Hari Priya, if you. Yeah, yeah. Ask. We have done it from here. Okay. We have done it from here. Yeah. Um, uh, Madam uh, Poonam, but uh, Bhatna, Hari Priya, Sh Sh Shashi, you can unmute from your side, ma'am. We have done it. Uh, Hari Priya, ma'am, have unmuted. Yeah, yeah. You can speak, uh, Madam Haripriya. You can unmute from your side and you can speak. Seema Sablog is saying she, they can't unmute. Seema oh, Sablog, please no, unmute. No. Those who have raised the hand, only we are unmuting him, ma'am. Okay. We, uh, we cannot unmute all. Uh, you know, then it will be very difficult to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So if the ones who have raised their hands find that they can unmute and ask, please do. Otherwise, please put the question down in the in the chat or your whatever you want to share, please put it in the chat. MGS room, he can do that. I don't know what's the name, I'm sorry. Sir, you can speak. Hello? Okay. Kalpa sir, Sri sir, can speak. Sir, sir Seema Sablo, yes, one sir. minute. Can you hear me? Seema ma'am, Seema ma'am is there? Ah. Yes, Seema, we can hear you. Seema ma'am, please unmute Seema ma'am. Yeah. Philomena. Uh, yes ma'am, as you showed about the historical life, I was very happy with it. I'm a math teacher. Okay, what I do is I play a game of KBM called as Kon Banega Mathematician. Right. As you showed, I divide it into two groups of students, group A and group B. And I take the quiz in the form of question, whatever is being taught in the class. So I was just thinking it's a similar idea for geography, what is being done. And this is what I do for my subject, ma'am, for maths. Children. In the first day when I asked, how many of you like maths? There are many students, ma'am. Maths is very boring. It is uninteresting. And when I tell that we'll be playing game, we will be having quiz. I can tell you at the end of the second month itself, I could see that, you know, all the students are actively participated in the subject of maths, ma'am. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I, what you've done is exactly it. You, you figured out that it's all about knowing your students. Yes, ma'am. If your students say, I don't like math, how can you as a math teacher change that feeling? Right? Yes, ma'am. Change the feeling not because you want them to appreciate you, but because you want them to love what you love. You yes. love math, don't you? And that's what that, that sense of being able to know your students, to first know who they are, what they like, don't like. Do you, how many of you have asked your students what books they read, what movies they watch? What kind of a you know um, game do they play? Do they have happening at home? What kind of families they live in? Is it a large one, a small one? How many of us get that information from our students, right? And yes, so the ones who are putting it in here that we ask, you're the ones who are actually deeply interested in who are they? Who you're not just teaching mathematics, no, ma'am. You're teaching children, and they have to love mathematics. So those of us here in this room of 950 people who understand that the important, most important thing is first to get a sense of who is my student? Who am I as a teacher? What do I come with? And then who is my student? What do they come with? And when we do an adhyayan, when we do an understanding or studying each other, they studying your knowledge, you studying their knowledge, that's when the whole thing becomes an exciting space where the school becomes a learning organization. Yeah? That's where you begin, that's your starting point. And until and unless you begin from that place, it's going to be really, really difficult. So I am um, sort of going to speak to you about the fact that Adhyan, we, we do a lot of work with schools. But what we have learned from the doing of the work with those schools, that's what I'm sharing with you today. 
it's not about what we have given, but what we have understood from schools is until the teachers, until the, the, the leaders, until the people who run the school, who own the school, care to think about why does a school exist? Who are these children? Where are they coming from? What is it all about? What kind of children are they? You know, what do they like? What do they dislike? What are they happy with? When I say something to them, do they connect with it because I'm using their examples or not, right? So if we want to um, look at how to build that culture of empathy, uh, I think if we begin, always begin with ourselves first, to think about this, how tough are you on yourself when you do something that's not acceptable, not right, you know, because we have, when we start with understanding ourselves, it's very easy to say, oh, I'm a very nice person. But that very nice person sort of suddenly becomes like a little difficult if you have a fight with somebody, then you start feeling a little upset that have I done something not quite right? What is it that I'm actually bringing to this relationship at home, in my classroom? If my children are all unhappy with, with me or my subject, most of the time we know as teachers that if the children don't like your, you as a teacher, they will not like your subject. So when you're coming in there, what, how can I relate to the children in a way that I, I can communicate to them who I am? What, I'm, what am I excited about? What do I like? What am I enjoying? So let's take the first one uh, and do a little deep dive into that. So how do I take care of myself? Can we begin to take a quick look at that? You just said in the beginning of this session that you're challenged, you're worried, you're, you're concerned about this current situation. Many of you would have family members who've got COVID or you might have had COVID. You might have had people who've had a tough time of it. Some of us might have lost precious family members. So what is it that we feel here? How are we taking care of ourselves in this hugely challenging time? Is that, is that something that we can quickly share on the chat? So quickly sort of looking at it and saying, how do I take care of me? How do I take care of myself about how I'm feeling? Okay, so Dr. Das is saying through reflection and feedback, Molly is saying by being responsible, by meditating, connecting with the people I care for, relaxing, being positive. Self-talk. Right. A lot of yoga, relaxing, prayers, being positive, being happy optimistic cooking is therapeutic okay fantastic so breathing yeah. exercises yeah. yeah okay so we see that there's a huge amount of options that we have over here for those who have not been able to do it well please take a look at the chat and see there are many things that can be done. Many people are offering their solutions, their ways of looking. And through this crowdsourcing of ways of making ourselves, take care of our, taking care of ourselves, we can do that. It's possible to, to use other people's solutions as well and try out and offer our solutions to them. Yeah. So that's beautiful. I think there's a lot of people who know how to take care of yourself, yeah. So then the question that comes up is, what about the other, yeah? So as a teacher, I need to know myself, I need to be able to take care of myself and then I need to realize that I'm interacting with students, with parents, apart from my own family, students and parents and peers. I'm uh, interacting with other teachers. So do I know my students well? How do I take care of them? What am I doing to reach out to them to say, I understand what you enjoy and I'm going to try and teach it in that manner. I understand what you're afraid of. I know that you don't like being humiliated. I know that you don't like it when I speak in a particular way or when I kind of compare you with each other. And so I will not do that. 
Some things I will hold myself back on, some things I will move myself forward on. What am I doing for my students, right? Okay, so I love the fact that many of you are talking to your students, being polite, being compassionate, especially now more than any other time, creating a friendly atmosphere, being friendly with them, yeah. Trying to make them comfortable, respecting their view, respecting their view, so important, yeah. Lovely. And how do we make sure that just like we saw this teacher doing, she didn't lose out on what has to be taught. She was very clear. She knew her objective. She knew why she had to do that lesson. She knew what she had to get the children interested in. So how are we making sure that that is being maintained while we are doing all of these things, while we make them feel important, while we make them feel cared for, right? That's right. So this, this sense of I can take care of myself, I am also taking care of my students. I, I care about who they are. I know them not just by name, but I know about them. I, I know the person behind that name. I know the person who is named that, right? And that's when you really get a connection with the child, with, the, with your students. And then asking yourself this very, very important question. Do I only know a few children or do I know all the children in my class? Am I being partial in some way by knowing the ones who are really um, you know, responding to me, who are uh, you know, coming halfway? Do I also see how I can reach out to those children who are not responding that easily, who may be suffering in a way that I don't understand? who may be really uh, keeping themselves very quiet because they are afraid or they are feeling that they don't know enough or they are just so unhappy at this point in time that they don't know how to communicate with me. So how am I making sure that it's not just out of a class of 40, it's not just 10 or 20. And if it's 20, then how do I make it 25? If it is 25, how do I make it 30? If it is 30, how do I move out? So every point you kind of challenge yourself to say, do I really reach out to every single child? If I'm having interactions, if I'm speaking with them, is it to every child or is it only to a few of the children who are responding back to me? So that's another, uh, you know, um, what, what we call uh, moving from a, a some children to a most children. And those who are able to reach the most children, those are the teachers who are really pushing their boundaries. And that's what we are trying here to think about how to do this, how to take care of myself, my own home, my family, but how to reach out. And then not to, not to just reach out to the students, but also my colleagues. Maybe there's a colleague of mine who's in a much more difficult situation than I am. Maybe there's a colleague whose family is in hospital right now who needs me to step in and say, I can do your substitutions for now. Don't worry about this. Go and look after the person who you need to look after. And also then the parents, some of whom might have lost their jobs, some of whom might be laid off, some of whom might have their parents in, in hospital, their parents unwell. So how are we actually ensuring this? Now, please remember that while I'm saying this because the context right now is this, what I'm saying is that this, this is true of you irrespective of whether you are in a crisis or whether you are not in a crisis. Because what we, we are looking at here is what is a great school? We're not looking at what is a great school only in COVID. Well, what we're saying is even in COVID, is this a great school? Yes, you know that when the teachers are doing this, when they are looking after their own self, but they also are looking after the student and their colleagues and their family, the families of the students. So that's where we are trying to sort of push our boundaries. And then of course, remembering that the context is education because we could end up just uh, sort of stopping at the level of saying, am I taking care of another person simply because I phone that person? 
But what, why, why are we doing this education? Why are we connecting with our students? We can't forget that. So the third part comes in here, which is, is there empathy being built for the planet? Is there empathy being built for this beautiful planet that we belong to? And is that something that we are thinking about when we are looking at our lesson plans, when we are um, planning the smaller, whether it's a mathematics lesson or a geography lesson or a history lesson or a science lesson, what's the sense of empathy we are building in the children? How many of us are actually thinking about, um, okay, what does it feel like to be a tree? What does it feel like to be a rock? What does it feel like to be the this, this sun? What, does it, what is it like to be those things which are voiceless, which don't have some way of being able to communicate? So when you begin to do that and you begin to understand your relationship with the world around you, it has to be one of compassion, love, and huge amounts of empathy. Because that's when you really begin to understand the, the education that we are doing here is to create a, a, a sort of a relationship between the child for themselves, the child for others, and the child with the planet. And that's what begins to create that school experience, that learning organization, which is built on empathy, care, and compassion and love for each other. If you are doing this when times are good, yeah, you're a good school. When you continue to do this when times are difficult, you are a great school. And I think what we are here to understand is if we, if we want to really, really want to live in a world where it, it's not going to have continuous and continuous crises, then we, not, we need to build that vision in our minds of what is it that is going to happen when, when the world is full of care and compassion and empathy and work towards making every lesson such that children not only learn to take care of themselves, others, but also of this planet and everything on it. So if we do this, and uh, all of you, there's 900 people in this room who are saying that, yes, this is something that we know and we can do and we are able to, then why does Adhyayan exist, right? So Adhyayan exists because we are looking at a whole um, sort of six aspects of a school. And what we do with you is to sit down and say, let us study these aspects. Let us understand the school thoroughly. So the six aspects are leadership and management. How does a leader and a manager of a school, how does the principal, the, the middle managers, the leaders, the coordinators, supervisors, all of the people, the teachers who are in positions of power, and how do they look at education? Do they share a common language? Do they talk to each other with the same understanding of what, what they're trying to do in the school? Is there a compassion and care for each other? So what is it that we are, how are we running that school? How do we understand learning? How do we understand management together? Do we have the same vocabulary? Do we have the same vocabulary for teaching and learning like we just discussed about this teacher? Do we have the same vocabulary for child safety, for child's uh, emotional life, their social life? Do we have a sense of it for the children's leadership? Do we have a similar way of looking at curriculum of community, of parents, of the alumni, of the people who are around us, our neighbors? And do we have a sense of how infrastructure and resources in the schools support what we are trying to do? And is that is that something that is understood in the same way across different stakeholders? That's our, uh, our approach to saying, can we begin to look at the school as a whole and how it's all connected with each other? Can we begin to make those connections? And that's uh, where it begins to move forward beyond this, yeah? So this is what Adhyayan does with a school. It, we work with you like this in this manner. Um, I think there is a, a very simple uh, management sort of an understanding of a school, which is uh, ages old, 
okay and that's where you move to the idea that if you want a school like this the kind that we are talking about where people really go from a, a sense of caring for each other then you have to plan for it this teacher who we showed you her example she planned for her lesson right she planned for it because she knew what she was trying to do and she knew it because the person who was her supervisor and manager supported this way of looking at how to teach children and the person who owned the school and ran it the governance of the school supported this way of teaching children so un, you know unless you begin with that sense of who am i why does the school exist what are we trying to do there together and how do we make sure we are talking in one language you will never be able to get to a great school let us make sure that not only we have this knowledge not only we have this information but we make sure that it is there across our schools and what can i say let us make this world a beautiful place i think we owe it to the children so let's plan let us review where we are and where we want to go plan for that make sure that we are getting there ask the children how are you feeling how is it you know is are we achieving the goals we are setting for ourselves make sure that the children also act the way that you would like them to do what you would like them to not just get information as a lecture but actually show with their example with their actions that they are able to do it and then we can say that yes we are a great school So thank you. Is there uh, anybody who has a question for us beyond this? Uh, you know, please let us know. And um, yeah, you may raise your hand. Uh, you know, those who have got some questions. I think Geeta Shiv Shiv Kumar. Geeta Shiv Kumar. Yeah. Yes, go on, Geeta. Yes, uh, ma'am. Uh, I don't have any question, but I want to really tell you that uh, the way you have conducted the session and you were telling that. Uh, it's very important that we need to know our students so that is like you know uh, that is the key point if you know your teachers halfway you are win as a teacher like you know 50 60% of the problem solves when you know your teacher and when they uh, when you know your students so uh, only one take away like you know not i'll not say one take away but uh, the session has given me the vision that yes uh, like you know during the covid situation also it's not very difficult task to know the students and uh, to implement such things though i am doing all the way to keep my class active to keep uh, the students motivated to uh, make sure that their family members are fine but uh, yes there is a long way to go and uh, i like you know i really appreciate uh, the way you have conducted and the small small points what you have told that is really very enriching and very motivating thank you ma'am thank you geeta thank you so much for that we have some yes, time anuradha uh, chandrashekhar who has raised her hand as well Anuradha, would you like to unmute? Ma'am, 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 ma just unmute. One second, please unmute, uh, Anuradha, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you, sir. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it is fine. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, probably uh, my question is more than uh, the session. Suppose a person is interested in joining your organization, is there any criteria for it? Do we I want to not now in the near future? Because uh, uh, we come from a family of teachers, right? From my great grandparents. In fact, uh, they were uh, tutoring and uh, uh, servicing uh, the uh, society, the students. We, of course, of course, I don't uh, take anything, anything. I just uh, do it the same way at a minimal level. In case we have some sort of a thought to join your organization, is there any procedure for the same statement? so i think that uh, uh, when we say please join us and become our partners uh, anuradha what we are saying to schools is you i mean all the schools with we've got 400 schools who are partners as far as we are concerned they are part of adhyayan 
I, I mean, frankly, I, I know Dr. Gopinath may not agree with this, but as far as we're concerned, since we have made this uh, happen, uh, Dr. Gopinath and his organization becomes part of Adhyayan. What is Adhyayan? Adhyayan is a movement for schools which are great schools, which care about each other, right? So if you want to be a part of Adhyayan, your school signs up basically and says, yes, we want to do this. And we want to do a deep dive into this. We want to do it in a way that really, truly asks fundamentally okay. important questions and uh, which then um, becomes, and then you become a part of going to other schools to teach them how to do this. So everybody then, you know, what we want is you should be able to teach at least 100 people in your lifetime so that we can spread out. There are 1.5 million schools. We need everybody's help to we reach. Need to get back up so oh, that this is uh, probably when you go through schools uh, it might be a very lengthy procedure there's so many facts to be uh, you, i mean procedure but suppose i as an individual want to join what will be the i'm sorry i'm just lengthening my question no, no, I that's, that's, <laughs> so, no, i basically want to help uh, people so, because, yeah another we don't run schools ourselves okay we don't have a school so i'm saying you only only some organizations like this individually. Yeah, so so the uh, Anuradha ma'am, there is a number given there in the chat box. Please contact Hi. them. Yeah. Thank you very much, ma'am. Nice of you. Thank you, Anuradhaji. That's really nice that you are interested. And I hope everybody wants to, uh, you know, be part of what this movement is. And that's what my hope is. Uh, we have uh, Manju Bala. Yeah, sure. Anju, would you like to say something? Uh, one second. I mean, I think we have to unmute her. Yeah, ma'am. Yes. Uh, uh, ma'am, uh, I just want to ask. I start all these things. Uh, I'm very empathetic to students. I All these suggestions given by you. Uh, I want to know my students. I want to chat with them, go into their deepest thoughts. But sometimes when I start it, I leave it in between. I don't know what happens in the classroom after uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so after some days. I just lost, lose control because so many other things just uh, <laughs> occupy me. So many other things happening around occupy me and uh, yeah, uh, I just started and that I can't continue with this. Why? Uh, how can I control this to pull it to the till the end? Yeah. And I think what you're saying is so lovely and thank you for being so authentic about that. I think is, you know, that's exactly the reason why I say that it, it mustn't be something that is only a single person's fight. Although I have, I have known people who've done it individually, like you have tried, but it really- I try most of the time. I'm, I, I try to. I hear you. From my heart. Yes, I know. That's you. That's why I said that you you've been really authentic when you say that. Uh, what I'm saying is that that the way to make this work, and you can try it if you like, is to have a community within your school that actually sort of sits together, maybe once in a fortnight. I would say once a week, and reflects on what's happening, what's going on, what is going on with the children, what is motivating me, what is demotivating me. This kind of a group, a support group that has to be created, every staff room has to have a collaboration in it, right? And if you, uh, I mean, if you can start doing it yourself, that's great. I personally feel that the best people who do it are the leadership of the school. And if you are in a leadership position, please set up this community within your school. Uh, make sure that it happens on a regular basis, just like you attend the CEIR meetings. Please make okay. sure that that happens in your school. So develop a community. Develop a community of people who think together, listen to each other, listen to each other's experiences. And you will find that that is what really uh, keeps you going and makes that day. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. The next uh, participant. Yeah. Nandini Mukherjee, ma'am, you have uh, any questions? Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, ma'am, uh, when you were talking about that empathy, uh, I just uh, felt that uh, uh, actually in this situation, I'm feeling very helpless. Yeah. I have already heard uh, that uh, four to five children of my school, maybe uh, two of them are students of class four, one of class three, one of class five, maybe there are more, uh, they have lost their fathers. Mm. Okay. So in this 
covid yeah so it's really very shocking like every day when i'm hearing something or the other that that child has lost his father one of the child's mother called me and told me this but many of them are not able to contact other, us also yeah even we also cannot now this is such a situation now with so many restrictions there is lockdown in my place so we cannot visit their uh, uh, fa- family or their houses or anything uh, i tried to call one or two of them but because of this situation maybe they are not picking up the phones also the, uh, what can the school or the school uh, uh, class teacher or the principal or the other teachers of the school what can they do to these children in this situation do you have any suggestion because i'm really feeling very helpless I understand your helplessness and I understand that it's difficult to get through to people. I am sure that what is important is that they should know that you're trying and whether you do it through uh, sending an SMS or a WhatsApp uh, or on a regular basis just reaching out to say I hope you're all right let me know if I can help that makes a big difference. But more than that if you would like to do it I think that uh, what I would recommend and this is mm. where I think that, you know building the community mm. in the school why mm. don't you Uh, let the other parents in the in that child's class know that look this is what is happening how do we as a class get together and actually support that uh, that parent and uh, see what we can do together i mean we are all as individuals reaching out and helping so many people surely we can help the people who are with you know within our child's class and the cl- classmates parents and see how we can create support groups for each other there may be uh, parents who are already friends with that with that mother or you know, so they can give uh, suggestions as to what she might need what would be the requirement of that family and that's where you begin to create that sense of look this is a community this is not an individual who is buying a education for her child this is a community the class is a, the smallest unit of that community but the school is the big community and how do we then support and i would sort of always definitely make a list of these people to let the management know what is happening to let the principal know what is happening to make sure that they are aware that these are the kinds of uh, you know challenges for that those particular families and to see how they would like to get involved in uh, reaching out so be proactive is all i'm saying and build those communities get those people you know people to sort of sit together and think together and you never know what kind of help comes out of it i can't predict it but i know that that's what is important that's all that's what i can say right now so we have another uh, uh, 3 4 minutes before uh, we uh, hand it over the to last, uh, mr shishan one more yes. question one more uh, question can be yeah can we take one more question uh, mr anchal uh, Would you like to share something or ask a question? Can Miss Anjal be unmuted? Yeah, yeah. She can do it from her side. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good evening, ma'am. It was uh, really a lovely session. I just want to know that uh, being a teacher, first of all, with the students of say forty and forty-five in a class, and with the limitation to complete the portion on time. how is it uh, feasible that we can uh, know each and every child the child who comes to us obviously we are there for them but there is always one child sitting on the corner of the class looking out of the window maybe having some issue or not interested in studies that we can know only after talking to the child so how can we reach with our own limitations of completing the portions and with all the limitations of the school how can we reach to each and every child in the class yeah so uh, i can give you a couple of things that people have done and maybe you want to try those out but um, uh, i i appreciate the fact that you bother to or that it's somewhere it's you know there in your mind that you want to reach that child right because otherwise you would never have asked me this question so i think let's start with you know first foregrounding your intention you want to reach that child that's why you're asking that question so um some people uh, sort of just do it as um, they kind of identify uh, for every day uh, like i i know uh, people who have said that okay every day we will reach out to at least two people or three people in the class individually like individual phone calls maybe 3 minute 4 minute phone calls but we'll do that so that uh, by the end of the month we've reached every child right so that's one option uh you may not need that because you might have 30 children who are very proactive and they're getting to you very regularly so you might have just 10 children you might want to divide that across the across the month and say okay every day i reach out to two of these who i feel i really need i don't know them well 
I want to get to know them and I want to reach out. The other thing that you might want to do is just check in case the child is not responding and is very monosyllabic, then you might want to talk to the child's parent and say, look, I want to just know some things that this child likes to do or is interested in, and then use that to put that into your lessons, right? So if the child likes to read, for example, and you find out what they're reading, you might put that into your lesson. You want to bring that aspect into your lesson so that you can... Yeah, yeah, Sureer, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sureer, sir, one yes. humble request, sir. Mr. Sureer Singh is waiting for a long time. Can we take his question as the last question, sir. please? Uh, two minutes, sir. Two minutes. Yeah, yeah. This is really saying quickly ask your question, sir. Okay. I'm seeing you since a long time. I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. Sir, you can unmute. You can unmute from your side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, again, you have to touch on again. Yeah. Okay, done, done. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot for giving me the chance. Kavita, ma'am, you and your team, it's really, it's excellent. Only the thing you know, I want to say is, see, being a teacher, we are connected to the students. We are going for the playway method of teaching. We are having a good group activities. All those connectivities is there. Students are showing the interest towards the class. We are connecting them to the content. But the main problem, what we are facing as a teacher is, you know, 95% students are giving us the result. What about those 4 and 5% students who are not showing us the result? That is what the main challenge I am facing as a teacher. Man. Please help me out for those 5% now. Please. So the fact that you're able to say this makes you on the top 10% of teachers in the in the world because I think what is important is the fact that you care about these children makes a difference. Uh, so you can try two or three things I've seen working. One of them is buddying. So uh, find the most empathetic children in your class. Um, and create buddies. You know, so for one child who's not able to do it, give them a buddy who is able to. And uh, tell the person who you, you are uh, working with that, look, I mean, this, this child can't um, uh, sort of understand this particular concept. I want, want you to do it without making that child feel that, he, that he's not okay. Uh, I really need you to help me to do that. And say to them that if this child uh, is able to understand it, you will get a, a, a sort of a um, badge from me, right? So you kind of give them an incentive for doing that, but make sure that they have a partner and a buddy and try that out and see what happens. Okay, I hope. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I firmly believe that our schools are learning institutions. From the first day of the school to the last, learning plays a ma major role in our lives. It's our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who are learning and preparing it for it for today. I request uh, one of our members of the board of directors, uh, Mr. C. Radhakrishnan, to detail our forthcoming projects. Radhakrishnan, sir. Yeah, we are conducting every Saturday different programs, which I feel is very useful for each and everyone. For example, today's two webinars itself, the morning one and also the present one conducted by Kavita Anand. Wonderful. Now coming up in the month of June, we, are, we have planned a set of workshops for teachers, which will be on teaching strategies. Flipped the classroom, collaborative, project-based design thinking, competency-based learning, action research, and teacher as an instructional leader. And our plan is to equip each and every teacher to implement NEP without any hurdles in their classrooms. With the letter in letter and spirit, that's our ultimate objective. So this program will come up in the month of June. We will be intimating each one of you through our social media and also through email. Those who want at that time, you can register. Yes, we can move to the next. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, I hope uh, by this time, all the participants must have uh, filled the feedback form, which was available in the chat box. A gentle reminder to all, all of you to stay tuned for our next webinar on coming Saturday, that is 22nd May, by Sadhu Gyan Balsal Das, an international motivational speaker on topic, Roots to Wings. Now, I request our Zonal Director for North Kerala, Dr. Jaymon Malekudi, to conclude the session and propose vote of thanks. Good evening, Sudesh, sir, and good evening, all the dignitaries. Really, CIR is blessed to have the presence of the resource person like Kavida Ma'am. And when we posted the information about the webinar, 
we put a question whether our schools can be the learning centers that question is in our mind of each and every participant after the session that is spirit of the session conducted by kavita ma'am madam and really we are proud to have your presence and the of creating a culture of empathy it's a part of the learning that's a part of the life skill we should have done it into the relation with the mind of each and every children that you have enlightened the participants today and on behalf of the ceo i express my sincere gratitude for the enlightening session the co founder as well as the executive director of uh, adhyan we ask the name reminds us you have done a great job you have done a great uh, guidelines given a great guidelines to enlighten each and every mind of the each and every participant to create a feeling of empathy among our students and to create a feeling among our staff you know the pandemic has forced us to stay back at home but i strongly believe it had made us closer because now i am talking from kerala and uh, there are principles from across the world so pandemic has given an opportunity to bring closer and all the principles are guided by kavita madam to develop a feeling of togetherness and to develop a feeling of empathy among our group and among the children if you take up this challenge it will be a great initiative and we will be feeling proud of our children and on this occasion i extend my sincere gratitude to the board of directors of ciam the premier members sonal directors and all the principals and educationists who attended thank you so much uh, i will uh, inform you all that kavita ma'am was talking uh, is talking from uk right now not from india and what's the time there uh, kavita now it's uh, still um, it's 1:30 in the in the day and it's yeah 1:30 pm see her passion <laughs> and uh, uh, and we forgot Easy. to thank neha thank you all uh, th yes, oh course. thank you neha ma'am also that's absolutely fine yeah. my pleasure actually, <laughs> she is in india but <laughs> very much neha ma'am that technical support is wonderful because a thank lot of definitely definitely really appreciate thank you thank you very much yeah. Jay Murthy, you please continue. Yes, yes. So uh, uh, definitely, uh, it is my pleasure to thank Neha Madam for the excellent technical support as you made us to do the polling. Even though elections in Kerala are so over, but still you have guided us how to do the polling. And uh, as you know, Twitter has affected the India, but it hasn't affected the platform of CIR. It's great. So in the morning session we have more than seven lakh people attended, and this present session across around one thousand uh, participants on the platform and one thousand four hundred participants in the YouTube also. Also two thousand four hundred members attended. So I am sure on behalf of the CIA, I can assure that all the principals will take this part to enlighten the mind of young generation in the. nearest future so let us make the pandemic a challenge but it can be a motivation for the entire society thank you thank you all thank you all thank you thank all you uh, dr shrisan uh, there is a request by a participant saying that can you share the feedback form on youtube we have already oh, shared uh, on the youtube, YouTube also we have shared it fine yeah. thank you thank you vande guru to all of you thank you vande guru thank you vijay ma'am thank you you made it possible Oh, uh, we should be grateful to you, uh, Kavita. Abundant gratitude. My days are jam jams. My dreams are shattered away. My days are jam jams. My dreams are shattered away. Never feel I'm old.
my sex is is my hell right in. 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 My sex is is my hell right in.